Hey, up next on the Marmy Rock Show, it's been a long time since we talked to these guys. We've got Rob DeLuca and Ray West of Spread Eagle, and uh, they've got a great new album out right now called Subway to the Stars. You can pick it up now on all your favorite outlets. Guys, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Thank you for having us. It's a- yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. So, man, it's been a long time since we talked, so uh, the first thing I kind of want to do is give you a chance to catch up with everybody. Um, it's been a little bit since we heard some new music, so uh, what have you all been up to in the last little bit here? Oh, wow, man. <laughs> well, Rob's been busy, right, Rob? Rob's always working. Yeah, we're always trying to work. Rob, Rob, yeah. You know, we're always trying to work, but we, uh, we've, you know, we've, we've been gigging with the band, uh, as much as we can and uh, we went to Europe in 2017 and uh, then we went into writing mode so that took a long time to write and record and do it right yeah and here we are we gained some momentum from going to Europe you know so was that kind of the impetus for releasing the new record? In other words, like, did, did that trip to Europe solidify for you guys that whether it's here in the States or over there, you got to keep on doing this? We'll talk about the trip to Europe and the influence. Well, I'm going to say yes, because uh, once Rob brought the whole, I think, well, Rob brought it to the table. He's like, you know, we got some gigs in Europe we can do. And uh, once we went over there, I guess it was maybe it was, you know, from going to Hull all the way to the Hard Rock Sneeze Fest, we just got, you know, we felt we felt very strong. So we just thought, let's just do it, you know. Rob got a, we got um, approached by Frontiers, and uh, need I say more? We just went for it. We just, you know, when when you're rolling and you're getting momentum, you start to get this a great energy around you, and I think that's what happened to us. So tell us a little bit about the lineup of the band. Is it the same from, you know, a few years ago when I saw you? And if so, um, if not, just tell us who's in the band these days. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, the, same. it's the same that you yeah. interviewed. You got Steve Shalev on guitar and Rick DeLuca on drums. So you guys have been together how long now with that lineup? It's been a while, hasn't it? Well, when did we see you? Oh my God! It's it's been I think it's been seven years or so maybe. Yeah, that's a little longer. Maybe almost ten years, right? Yeah. Ten with 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 Rick, and about seven or eight was Eve. So that was yeah. I kind of remember that was the first thing we did interview we did. So we became you know strong once we got Eve. I think that's when it all sort of solidified. So, man, this is a great release from you guys, and I know it was a little while in the works. Tell us a little bit about the production. Uh, who produced this? Where you guys recorded it? Was this a, a distance recording thing, or did y'all come together? Talk about the making of the record. We definitely came together. Oh, wow. We did it in, in Brooklyn. And, uh, you know, we, we wrote for for about five months, and then we um, we started rehearsing, and, and we went in and knocked it out. Every, oh, you know, the budgets are small these days compared to back in the day, so you got to be prepared, and we were, and, and we just, uh, I think we kicked ass on it. Yeah. So um, I've added the Sound of Speed song to our Golden Does It. I, I love the song, and it's a very fun video. Tell us about the making of that video. Uh, our buddy, uh, well, first of all, Rob and I love go-karts. All right, so when we used to tour back in the day, I think any opportunity to go to a go kart track, we always took it. So there's a few, you know, a few times back in the day we had a great time. So we were with this song. Uh, Rob and I just automatically went to you know something instead of doing the usual cheesy, you know, uh, tracks through cars or, or anything like that. Why not have us be, you know, racing cars? But they were carts. So we, uh, yeah. So so we um, we, uh, we approached a friend of ours who was a director. And we were going to shoot this video for it, and uh, we thought it'd be a lot of fun. But uh, the first, the first setup to go shoot, the guy in charge of production that had all the gear was in a freak accident, and he he got killed. Oh dear God! So luckily, a friend of our, yeah, luckily a friend of ours, Phil Alaco, stepped in and did us a huge solid and, and directed this video for us. So he's the one that made it sort of come together and took our ideas and and made us look, you know, silly and somewhat cool at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I mean we. We, you know, we were freaked out of that that happening just three weeks before the the video was shot, and you know, so we had all these people around us dealing with the, you know, the very sad aspect of, of someone passing away, and 
us also happened to, to not just keep our mind on the fact that we had to deliver this video. Um, yeah. So, you know, no, no matter what happened, we still had to get this done. So it was difficult, and uh, and we did, and Phil Laco stepped in and, and saved our lives, which which was awesome. Phil was originally the, the guitar player in Law and & Order, and now he's a famous director. So, um, right. it, 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 let me just add, it, it was fun all the way around, because the song itself is fun, and it's a blast to play. It it's kind of just comes off, off, you know, it comes right out of, out of the, the files on you, you know, and then the video is, is a blast, and it was a blast to do, so we really enjoyed it. it was, it's all, we had a great time. Yeah, it was a blast, and it's, it's ironic that that came out of something so bad. Um, yeah. You know, but it, it really was a great, fun thing that came out of something that was really bad. So, um, hey, a song I want to ask about on the record, and, and if I'm naive and missing the reference, I just want to know about it. It's uh, the, the 29th. What's that song about? 29th of February. It's got a lot of references to increments of time, uh, references to things are temporary. Other than that, I don't know. What do you think it's about, right? Uh, you know, the whole thing with, with Rob and I, and, I, and I'll tell you this, if, this isn't cliche, and I really don't want to make this own, you know, I don't like explaining lyrics because oh, so many yeah. people take the, the lyrics that we write and they have their own interpretations of them. You know? So yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's a celebration of time is what it is. So if you so. think about it that way, you know what I mean? I think everybody will get it, and the lyrics will mean different things to different people. But it's really about a celebration of time. So, for like, and we know about time because it took us—it took us a long time to get here. So, we celebrate <laughs> time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I absolutely do. So, um, hey, for those that are just—you know—the album hasn't been out all that long. Came out on uh, August 9th. Um, for folks that haven't heard it yet, talk a little bit about how the style and sound compares to some of the previous releases, in your guys' opinion. I think it's a grow. It's a it's a more mature effort. Not because we're where we are in life, but because musically, you know, uh, we just don't like to rest on our laurels. I don't like. I would hate to repeat the same thing over and over again. I'm, I'm not happy doing that. And anybody who knows Robin and myself know that we are an evolved evolved writing team. We don't like to just rehash old stuff. So I think it's it's where we are now. I think it's our evolved sound, both of us, with Rob's musicality and my sense of musicality, where we are now. That just represents us really well. I think the record, I said record, that's right. I love that term. Yeah, keep has, going, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. It, you know, it's it's a record. It, it, it represents the energy that we always have had for rock and roll. The intensity that went into the first record was very wild and crazy and very um, unbridled. You know, I, I honestly didn't know what the hell I was doing when I got on the mic. It just came out at, at 100%. But I think we've all learned to control and be better at our instruments. So I think that shows in this new... You know what I mean? We have... We have very traditional sensibilities and also very modern sensibilities. I think we marry them really well together. I hope that makes sense to you. It does. I agree with that, too. I think uh, we took some of the fire from the debut record and, and added it with just our experiences in life, lyrically, and our experiences in songwriting. And uh, yeah. luckily our fans really like it and are coming on this journey with us, and critics really like it, so... We obviously did something yeah. right. We didn't. We didn't overthink it. We just wanted to make sure we could relate to the first album that it related to. Yeah, music. First album in some way. Yeah, let me just add the music. Yeah, let me add Rob that you know, even the, the phrasing and the vocal melodies are a collaborative effort. It wasn't like it's, I just went to the mic on my own and we took we all were you know by committee doing this together. It's, it's very cool. Definitely. So it's definitely a band effort. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah, I got you. Well, it's definitely a band effort. This record, and and, and every all four of us are really happy with it. So I saw like on your Facebook page. You know, I usually check before I, when I'm talking to a band about their Facebook page, and I noticed a lot going on with uh, you guys. Seem to have kind of a strong what you call street team, and lots of bands have a street team. So, what does a street team do uh, for you guys, and how would one that's a fan get involved in that? Good question. Well, what the hell do they do? <laughs> They walk around the street with signs, you know. Uh, but we got devil. it's all about the business. Freddie's yeah. music, it's devil music. Satanic rock. No, 
Yeah, we wanted the opposite. We wanted them to promote us, but they're out there with signs saying, don't listen to Spread Eagle, it's devil music. <laughs> oh, I think they just yeah, it's, all, it's all backwards. Yeah, they it's all backwards. Them. Yeah. I think we're getting lucky with people that are very gifted with social media and are very savvy. So the street team for us isn't literally the street, I guess, but I mean, people that can work social media and kind of fight for you when you're not able to do that. You know, the times that we're doing concentrating on other things you need someone out there going to battle for you to let people know that this record is good and you have to have people that care you know that the band does its thing but you can only do so much yeah then dory evans he has a great job of, yeah. of corralling a bunch of people and coordinating with them and just um getting word out about this record you know like uh it's it's some people are, are very passionate about this this record and that makes them want to it's like a call to arms they want to they want to do something they want to tell someone so they it wasn't our idea it was their it was Dory's idea and uh, and it's it's really taken off so how yeah, any, any, how to to join it was the second part of the question I think it's uh, Spread Eagle Band fan group so if you just put in Spread Eagle Band into the into the search engine it'll come up. And you could just uh, write them and, and join. It's separate from the band. It's it's, it's through other people, but uh, we're obviously, you know, helping them in any way, and they're certainly helping us a lot. 